In the second lesson of chapter 8, section 8.2, we're going to look at how we multiply and divide rational expressions. Uh, rational expressions are just another word, really essentially for fractions. Um, you know, so we're going to look at how we multiply and divide, which will also include uh, reducing uh, fractions. Simple enough, right? Uh, except our fractions are going to involve expressions that have uh, variables in them. But a lot of the same rules, all the same rules that we have known and grown up with as far as multiplying and dividing fractions will still apply to these problems. All right, I want to begin first by looking at how do we simplify a rational expression? How do we simplify a fraction or how do we reduce a fraction? Um, you reduce fractions by canceling common factors, okay? Um, so one way we can do it, and I like to just kind of show this on a first example, but typically I do not do this in practice. So I'll just kind of state that, like normally we just kind of pick up on the shortcuts real quick. Um, but we can write this out as its factors. For example, three x to the fourth is three times x times x times x times x. 9 times x is 3 times 3 times x. Okay, factors are things that multiply together, right? So I can, now that I see all the factors, I can cancel common factors. This 3 takes away one of these 3's. 3 for a 3. Can't take away both, just one for one. Uh, this x can take away this x. And if there are no common factors left, then we are done reducing the problem. This becomes the three x's on top become x to the third. Three on bottom is just three. Okay. Um, in practice, you're probably not going to do that after you see it the first time or two. You're just going to see um, this three over nine and reduce three over nine to one third. And then if you recall, when you divide the x's, the rule says you subtract the powers. Four minus one makes x to the third, and you essentially get the same thing. We not write the one, and we've got the same looking answer. Okay. The second problem here, I put here as an illustration of um, what you can't do. Um, you cannot rewrite this sum as product. You cannot write, rewrite this difference as a product. Um, these two quantities up here are not factors, and neither are these, because factors like we saw here, factors multiply together. This is not multiplied together. If they're not factors, then we cannot cancel common factors. Um, in other words, I cannot divide these x's. I cannot reduce 4 over 8 to 1 half. In fact, this is already simplified. Now, in complete contrast to the very last example where we saw the pluses and minus signs and we said already simplified, cannot do anything with it, cannot reduce anything. Uh, this is an example where we can reduce, but you cannot reduce like x squared over x squared and you cannot reduce here or here. What you must do is rewrite, rewrite it in a factored form. That is a must. Uh, if you just start crossing things out, you're going to be wrong every single time. So in a factored form, got to think back to kind of reverse FOIL. Uh, the numerator x times x makes x squared. I want two numbers that multiply to negative 2 and add to positive 1. So I'm going to use positive 2, negative 1. Uh, the denominator. It's x times x to make x squared. I'm going to multiply to 3, or negative 3, add to 2. That's going to be positive 3 minus 1. Okay. Notice now this expression is factored. It's written as a product, okay, where the parentheses touch here. That's product, and I can cancel common factors. This factor can cancel that one. The ones that are the same can reduce out of the problem. 
And so the final answer with the common factors reduced is x plus 2 over x plus 3. Don't try and make the mistake of reducing the x's. You cannot reduce them. In other words, think of it like this. You cannot reduce part of a sum. You can reduce the whole thing if they're completely the same, but you cannot take away part of it. Okay? All right, how about multiplying rational expressions? In other words, multiplying fractions. Um, when you multiply fractions, recall the, the rules are you multiply everything on top together and you multiply everything on bottom together. This would be the same as 20x to the eighth divided by 30x to the fifth. Well, once I do that, it's exactly like the very first example in that now it's just an exercise in reducing the fraction. 20 divided by 30 reduces by 10, so it reduces to 2 thirds. Uh, the x to the fifth divided by x to the eighth, we subtract their powers and I get x to the third. 2x to the third divided by 3. Okay, let's do one more of the same type as the last one. Uh, if you'd like to hit pause here, uh, try it yourself, and then hit play and see if you got it right, that would be a good uh, opportunity to, to just check and see how you're doing. Um, I begin by multiplying the numerator. 3 times 10 is 30. The x's will add to be x to the 8th. The y's will add to be y to the 7th. In the denominator, 2 times 9 is 18. The x's add to be x to the 5th. The y's add to be y to the 12th. Okay, now it's a matter of reducing the fraction. Uh, 30 and 18 both divide by 6. Okay. The x's, I subtract them. Notice that the x on top is bigger. So when I subtract them, the result goes on top, where the bigger one is. 8 minus 5 is 3. The y's, I subtract them, but notice the y on bottom is bigger. So when I subtract them, uh, the result goes in the denominator. 12 minus 7 is 5. And there's the fraction reduced. Okay, what about a, a different looking problem than the last two? One where we've got all these plus and minus signs. Remember we said when we're reducing fractions, you cannot cancel part of a sum. It's not possible. This is one where you have to factor. Factor completely all expressions. Okay. Uh, the numerator of the first fraction has a common factor of 10. The denominator factors into two binomials. x times x makes x squared. We'll use negative 4 and negative 2. Times, this x plus 3 is just x plus 3. It's not squared, so we can't do the two binomials, and there's no common factor like this was. Uh, the denominator has a common factor of 5. I like that. Now, you can think of this as two separate fractions. You can think of this as one big fraction. And we can start reducing the fraction of its common factors. Okay, so what's common? This x plus 4 can take out this, or x minus 4 takes out this x minus 4. This x plus 3 takes out this x plus 3. This 5 reduces into this 10 two times. And after all the canceling is done, we're left with just a 2 on top and an x minus 2 on bottom. Don't try and take out the 2's because 2 is part of this sum down here. Cannot take away the 2. Last multiplication problem to go over. Again, a good chance to pause, try and do it on your own, and then hit play and see if you can. Um, again, just like the last one, we're going to factor everything that we can. The x minus 3 is just simply x minus 3. The 4x plus 20 share a common factor of 4. So dividing 4 out of each leaves 4 times x plus 5. The x plus 5 on top, I cannot mess with. The x squared minus 9 is a difference of squares, x plus 3, x minus 3. 
and now we're ready to start canceling everything that's common. X plus 5 takes out X plus 5. X minus 3 takes out X minus 3. Um, in the numerator of this fraction, it appears that nothing is left behind, but uh, don't forget, all these parentheses are like 1 times them. So in the numerator, I'm left with just a 1. Denominator, we've got the 4 and the x plus 3. Um, not wrong if you had 1 over 4x plus 12. You could redistribute down there if you want. But really to me it's just kinda it's kinda extra work to get here. And so usually I don't do it. I just leave it completely factored. But it's not wrong either way. Next we'll look at how do we divide fractions. Um, we know since we've been younger, grade school, we know that when we divide fractions it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay, and we're going to change this to a multiplication problem. If I rewrite it, it's 5x to the fourth over 8x squared y squared times 8y to the fifth over 15. Okay. Once you do that first step, then this is no different than the problems we just spent the, the last few minutes doing. Uh, we just need to multiply together and reduce the fraction, or if you prefer, you could even just start reducing now since everything's multiplied together. I see no plus and minus signs, so this 8 divides out this 8. Uh, this 5 divides into this 15 three times. Uh, these 2x squareds take away two of those. This y squared takes away two of these, leaving me with three. And so after all that reducing, subtracting the exponents, when all that's done, I have on top x squared y to the third divided by three. Another example just like the last one, again it's a good chance to hit pause and try it for yourself if you're watching at home um, to see if you can do this. I'll change this to a multiplication problem first. So it's x squared divided by 4 times 12y squared divided by x to the fourth y. Okay. Once I'm here I can start reducing the fraction. 4 goes into 12 three times. Uh, x squared takes out two of these x's, leaves me with x squared. This y takes out one of these y's, so it leaves me with one left over. Um, after all that reducing is done, on the numerator we have 3y, denominator we have x squared. Next we see an example that's got all these plus and minus signs within it. This is another example where we have to factor factor everything. Okay? It's also a division problem, so I'm going to kind of do two things at once. I'm going to start factoring. As I'm factoring, when I get to this fraction, I'm going to change it to multiplication and I'm going to flip this fraction. I'm going to do those two things at once just to save a little bit of writing space. The numerator of the first fraction it's 2x squared, so it's going to be 2x times x. I need to multiply the negative 4 and place them in such a way that we add to negative 7 in the middle. So this gives me negative 8, positive 1, which adds to negative 7. Uh, the denominator is a difference of two squares, x plus 3, x minus 3. Uh, in this next fraction, the stuff that's in the numerator, when I change to multiplication, this is going to come down here. It's a difference of squares. 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1. Um, the denominator actually has a common factor. Uh, notice all these numbers here divide by, uh, they all divide by 4, leaving 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. Okay. So I need to take out that 
common factor of 4 and then can I continue to factor this that's left behind. 2x squared is 2x times x. Um, I want to multiply to 3, so I'm going to use negative 3 and negative 1 and place them in such a way that the outside and the inside product add to the negative 7. Alright, once I'm this far, that's most of the work of the problem. Now comes the fun part of canceling everything out that's common. Um, so let's see, what do we see? I see an x minus 3 on top and an x minus 3 on bottom. I see a 2x plus 1 and a 2x plus 1. I see a 2x minus 1, a 2x minus 1. And everything that's left over now is singular. Nothing else can cancel out. So I've got on top of the fraction of 4 and an x minus 4. And on bottom I see an x plus 3. And actually, parentheses aren't necessary in the denominator, as there's no coefficient to, to, to require them. And the last problem to look at is just another division problem. It's a little more challenging in that there you see some higher powers of x show up here. Uh, I've just designed this problem with some common factors, is all. Um, so let's see. I'm going to... Um, we can maybe do this in two steps, uh, I suppose. The first one, and the, the numerator has a common factor of x squared. Which means it factors completely x squared, x plus 3, x minus 3. Divided by, the denominator is just a standard trinomial. It's going to be minus... 3 and minus 1. So we multiply to 3, add to negative 4. And we're going to change the multiplication. Uh, the denominator here, x squared minus 16, goes up to the numerator. x plus 4, x minus 4. Uh, the numerator here is going to go to the denominator, but notice there's a common factor here. I can take out an x squared, leave behind x squared plus 2x minus 8. So this trinomial now must factor into two binomials. x times x, we can use plus 4 minus 2. Okay, so a little work on the common factors uh, of these two numerators. Okay. Well now we're ready uh, again I think for the fun part. We can start canceling out everything that is common x squared takes out x squared, x plus 4 takes out an x plus 4, x minus 3 takes out an x minus 3, and that's the only thing common that I see. So I'm going to write my final answer as x plus 3, x minus 4, divided by x minus 1, x minus 2. You can foil this, but I say kind of why do it. Um, this is the correct answer. Uh, I can see in this form that nothing reduces, that I've got a completely reduced fraction. If I were to foil the top, foil the bottom, I wouldn't be able to tell if it was reduced unless I refactored back to this point. So, 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 so to me, I think it's preferred to just leave it as this in a completely factored state.